Hello, everybody, and welcome to DE Solutions Lab. I'm Pam Baragliano Muniz, Chief Editor of Dental Economics. And with us tonight is a dental industry expert and advocate, one of my favorite people to chat with, Gary Cady. He is the CEO and founder of Next Level Practice. Gary, thanks for joining me today. Oh, Pam, it's always a pleasure. I'm so excited for what we're going to talk about today. I am so excited too. So, okay, everybody, are you ready for this? Because when I think about my payroll and kind of things that I deal with in my practice, I always think about, I don't know, kind of the money suck that goes along with it, you know, taxes and all of those things. And um, I'm like, oh, yeah, they work that many hours, like all the things. And Gary today is joining us to talk about turn your payroll into a profit center. The secret to ensuring everyone on your team is motivated and productive. So after this conversation, I'm expecting that when I get my payroll reports, I feel like, yes, this is an investment worth investing in because I'm going to see these numbers just increase over time. Gary, welcome tonight. Oh, it's a pleasure, Pam. And you know, here's the thing. It's like so many of us, when we're running a business, we're stepping over dollars to get to pennies and, you know, we're trying to cut expenses. And I've learned that you can't shrink your way to growth. But if you learn this basic principle of taking your biggest expense, which is our payrolls, right? And turning that into a machine of profit and, you know, obviously caring deeply about them, taking good care of them but really showing them what their return needs to be individually and having them become aware of it, all of a sudden that payroll starts to turn into a profit center and you can't, you can't stop the madness. It's just like you'll outpace your expenses and get yourself to a profitability that is really dramatically different than the one you're in. That's incredible. And this is why everybody, this is why Gary is joining us every single month for this year. He basically mm -hmm. is like Celine Dion, but better. He's <laughs> with us. <laughs> and this is why, because Gary's going to give us the tools that we need to really you know, motivate our team, keep our team inspired and excited, but also for us on the back end and as a practice owner to see a return on this investment. So Gary, I couldn't be more thrilled to be doing this with you. Yeah. And it's like, you know, such a big topic now because what's happening is, you know, the expense of running a business is just, it's getting greater. And our remuneration back from insurance companies isn't changing any, anytime too soon. So it's like something needs to give. And usually it's the back of a dentist because they have to work harder and that's not acceptable or the relationship at home, which is not acceptable to me or parents that can't be with their kids because they have to work more hours, you know, something has to give. So it's so exciting when I get a chance to talk to people from DE after our sessions, they come on and spend time with me and they share their story and they're like, Gary, I can't take it anymore. What do I do? And um, today, that's why we really like uh, had this topic based upon what your community is asking for. It's like, I really need to focus on my profitability. And the the one place to look is in your payroll. And we're going to unpack that today. So let's get right to it. We know that hiring, training, and retaining team members has been a grind, to say the least, yeah. in the dental community throughout this pandemic. And yeah. practice owners seem to be stuck in a vicious cycle of team turnover. And this trend does not seem to be slowing down. And right. so you promised to let us in on the secret to ensuring that our team stays motivated and productive. But before we get to that, I wanted to start with getting your take on why do you feel the industry is still in crisis? Yeah, well, you know, there's been a, su a supply and demand issue, right? And it's really, it's, it's dichotomous because there's a supply and demand issue, especially in hygiene, especially in, you know, different specific states that we work in. But then there's the great resignation happening, which is 50% of people wanting to leave their position. So it's like, well, if that's the case, why don't I have team members? Well, there's, there's a great divide as well going on, Pam, that I'm seeing is the people that have made the changes that need to be changed after the pandemic. Then there's pe been people sitting on the sidelines thinking business as usual is, is just like, I'm just going to, it's just going to uh, magically turn around. And it's just not the case. Now, here's the interesting thing. The pandemic wasn't done to us. It was done for us. And what happens on the backside of crisis is 
it highlights that there's something that needs to be taken care of that hasn't been taken care of. And if you've been avoiding something and sitting on the sideline and hoping it goes away, that ain't going to happen this time. I use the word ain't, ain't here because, you know, it just ain't going to happen. It's like, that's my harsh word for like, Get off the sidelines and step on the court. Now you might be sitting there like just like the doctor I just got off the phone with before we we started tonight. And he was like, well, Gary, I'm running out of gas. Like, what is this going to take? You know, I'm running out of gas. Do I just sell to a DSO or do I take responsibility? And he really got to see that he was leaving so much on the table. And really just a couple of tweaks will get him there. We're going to talk about that tonight in, in terms of what there is to do. But it, it has to do with the seismic shifts in supply and demand. And then the great resignation going on where people, they show up physically, but they're not really there and they're not really engaged. And if you don't have a fully engaged team, you're, you're not going to be able to produce results. Even if I give you this model that I'm going to give you tonight about training and putting a business model in and having them be accountable to a measure, none of that's going to work because you're working with an unwilling person. And we see that a lot in a lot of dental practices. I think so too. And I think that it's important to also keep in mind that and I get it, everyone, because I'm doing it too. I'm sitting back, I'm listening to Gary, and I'm not only listening, I'm thinking about how this information can be applied to my practice. And I know I mentioned this before, and I mentioned it several times, and obviously this is a big deal for me. Um, you know, it took me a pandemic to realize I did not have the right team in place. And mm -hmm. I think that a lot of these practices and a lot of these recommendations that you're going to be giving us are really only go into work when you have the right mindset for yourself as a practitioner and as an owner, but also if you have the right team in place. So while we're, many of us are hiring and trying to do that, just because you have that team member that just won't leave you doesn't mean that there's a great reason to make them stay. Exactly. Yep. And you know, the other, the other part I want to highlight here is what I call the Debbie Downer, Pam. So I just, I just identified this. This is another reoccurring thing where there's the Debbie Downer on the team and that Debbie Downer sucks the energy out. See what happens is I just took up pickleball. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty awesome, bam. But the thing about it is, is I played with a world-class pickleball player and I just started playing and I was playing great. When I played with my son who's 17 and he was just like batting the ball around. It was horrible. So we play up to the people that are on our team. If you let B players on an A team, they're not going to, they're, they're going to play down to the B player and everybody's playing down. All boats rise the minute you deal with it. And here's the other thing I learned about this. The average doctor doesn't want to confront and deal with whatever that is. And they hope that that goes away. But in today's world, if we don't come face to face with people who are misaligned on our team, it brings the rest of the team down and you'll see it in your revenue. So these are a couple of the nuances that I wanted to highlight on the front end of our conversation today. I think that's really important to say that. And I think that you're right. I think that, you know, while we might have the energy sucked out of us on a day to day basis, it will impact our bottom line. And I think that that's something that we have to kind of keep in mind because I think we don't always think about the energy in the practice and the, the motivation in the practice will ultimately impact our numbers. And so, look, I get it. And for those of you that are stuck and may need a help, they can. Gary has such a great opportunity for you. So I encourage you to stick around to the end. You definitely don't want to miss what Gary's going to offer you. But also, we are fielding questions. So please feel free to ask your questions. Enter them into the question box on the right-hand side of your page here. And we will do our best to get to your questions. The other thing I love about Gary is if we don't get to that question tonight, he'll get to your question and get back to you. So you Absolutely. will get your question answered. So please, by all means, type away and you will get your questions answered. Yep. So we've spoken about your approach to getting the right team member hired in a prior session, which was great. But tonight I want to talk about how do we train them and how do we retain that new team member? The last thing a practice owner needs is to lose a new hire that they worked so hard to find. Trust me, it's happened to me like twice right now. Um, hmm. Let's start with training because yep. we know that training is a ton of work. Yeah, and 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 this is, I, I want to highlight two things that are in the way of training people. Number one is the ability to understand how to train somebody. And number two is the time to do it. You know, it's more like you get thrown into the fire and they got to kind of like swim with the school of fish that are going on inside that practice. 
And I don't usually um, dive right into a solution like this, but I am, I am in this specific instance, Pam, you know, I like to give away things and books and stuff, but find yourself with somebody that has a learning management system that already has it built. Don't do it yourself. It is, I, this is a, a very different thing because what it, you know, it took us since 2013 to build an, a robust vault of video and downloadable education and millennials learn differently. So we're dealing with basically like 65% with millennials there, you know, you know, parenting millennials look for YouTube for parenting. Like they go to YouTube for their parenting skills. It's awesome. So it's very accepted to have video education. And I'm talking small, small four minute videos that once you give them the how to's like how to deal with broken and canceled appointments or how to be. And one of the things that you and I talked about, Pam, is in dentistry compounding this is people don't have dental education. There was a lot of hires being done that that don't have a dental background or a dental education, you know, like bank tellers or customer service people like that. You know, a lot of doctors because of the supply and demand did that. And that's cool. But you know, and I love that because they come from a fresh perspective. I mean, we don't have to ha help them unlearn. The quickest point from A to B here, Pam, is find yourself a company that already has the training already developed in a learning management system, short videos, and accountable learning that has them either, you know, like we have a system where we show a video. Here's how you handle a broken and canceled appointment, how to do it. They hate role playing. Do you ever notice that that teams hate role playing? Do you know why they hate role playing? I don't know, but everybody hates it <laughs> because they, you know, public speaking is the biggest fear before dying. Right? They have to public speak in front of people that they they work next to. So the embarrassment of that doesn't work. So the way I think is like, how can I Tai Chi this thing? Tai Chi thing is like they come with energy. You twist the energy and give it back to them. I'm like, voila, we show them how to do it in a short video. They were going to utilize the leverage of looking good and fear of looking bad. They record their video. We found that the average recording is eight takes because the hair is out of place. They said the wrong word. Then they up level it to the system. They upload it to the system. And then the team leader on the team actually gives that, that review of that video. So now let's say you had a broken and canceled appointment and you have some time, or you're going to let your front desk take an, you know, half hour of, you know, uh, time to, to train. They watch the video, they, they practice it, they upload it. Now you have an accountable feedback system on actually what they do on the specific things that they want. So this type of learning management system, whether you, you know, and we have one we're, we're giving, uh, all dental, um, dental economics um, user. So if you get on my schedule, we'll give you a free month of, you know, just try it, make sure you like it. No cost, no obligation, just jump right in and you get full learning management system and full access to it for a whole month. Wow, that's amazing. So I told you, <laughs> you're going to hear all of these things, Gary. Yeah. Right. He just kind of like gives you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's right here. This is called our Abundance University. Everything that you want, you just type it in, broken and canceled appointments, you'll get the video. It's right here. Um, we have a whole curriculum for one year, um, tools and tasks, morning huddles, how to get how to get your team on board, patient retention, you know, everything is right here. You just click, the video comes up, you do the training and you're all set. And you also get access to the back of the house. So you can actually, Pam, jump right in and the you can see how long people are training for if they pass, pass the quizzes, if they've uploaded. And by the way, I know you didn't know I was going to do that. I hope it's okay. I just, I'm like, I'm sitting here going, I can't explain it. I'm like, let me just put it out there. So I hope I'm okay that I just did that. Oh, this is your residency. You can do it whatever you want. Oh, I, and you know, I think Katy Perry is cooler than Celine. So I'll go with the Katy Perry residency at Planet Hollywood. Okay. Although, do you like Celine? Are you like a big Celine fan? You know, uh, you know, every once in She's a while, good. I could try to bust out a tune like her, but it's um, <laughs> nowhere near where it needs to be. But I also love Katy Perry, so. You can sing, too, on top of everything? Oh, okay. I, I try to sing, but I don't, trust me, that's a story for another day. But no, you do not want me to sing. In fact, 
when I lecture and I give a break and after the break, it takes people time to settle down. I always yeah. say, okay, if you guys don't get quiet, I'm going to start singing. And that <laughs> makes the room silent, like a piddle drop. So they, they can tell that they don't want to hear us. I love it. I love it. So yeah. So get a learning management system. Don't do it yourself. Somebody's already mastered it. You can get it at low or no cost. We're giving away a free month. Get on my calendar and then I'll give you the link after we're done. So just wanted to put that in. That was just my added value today. I love that. Now I have a question. I can yeah. imagine that if you're using this type of automated learning system, um, I can tell you I've never used one. And so in my head, it takes people about six months to kind of settle into the role. It yeah. would imagine I would imagine that using this type of system that their learning curve must be so much faster and oh, yeah. the time it takes them to get settled into the practice is probably so much less. Well, and then they're coming from the right place because the first thing we do is plug in their purpose. Most people don't have a purpose. Like if I ask people their purpose, they don't know. And that's the ground of where they come from. So they create a purpose like helping people or uh, making a difference in people's lives. So like the way of being gets elevated and then we give them the step-by-step -step process to operate as a treatment coordinator, as a, you know, a person who's going to schedule for to goal. Like they, they don't, they, they don't default, especially if you don't come from dentistry, scheduling to goal. It's like, what does that mean? How do I do that? And we actually give them the step-by-step -step process and it's all done by video. So millennials and baby boomers like it too. They secretly like it because they don't have to read a bunch of stuff and take forever to get there and read a big book. It's like big snippets. And what they love, Pam, is they go out and take a break and have some coffee and then they come back on the court and they practice it right away. Like imagine practicing and reviewing and doing this um, individual role play that you're uploaded and you just practice it eight times. So when you're live with a patient that costs you money to attract and that person wants to cancel, you're gonna help move them into that spot. And you know, one of the things we found, um, Pam, is that the most, they, they don't wanna look bad or feel bad for another person. We help them overcome that by like, oh, I just had somebody say, well, I know that person doesn't have any money. I feel badly for them. So I didn't present any treatment. And it's like, meanwhile, that's affecting your bottom line. That's how you turn a payroll into a profit center by elevating the skill set and the abilities of your team. I agree. And I think it's also something that we always just have to remember that it's our responsibility to tell our patients what we see and what recommendations are there. And it's their decision to decide if they're going to do it or not. But yep. it's our ethical responsibility to tell them what we see and not say, cavity there, there's a crack in their tooth, but I feel bad. I'll just, you know, wait till the tooth cracks in half and then they have triple the fees they have to pay. So I think, you know, if nothing else, your team needs to know that it's, you know, that's our ethical responsibility too. So there's something to be said with that. So, all right, you have this amazing training system. But what happens once they're trained? How do we keep our team members engaged, Gary? Well, here's the big thing. And this is also how you turn your payroll into a profit center. If you don't have a, you can have all the training and motivation in the world. You can have all the great motivators, great morning huddle motivators. You can have great training, but it goes out of existence because it's, it, it's relying upon how people feel in that day. And then if I feel good, if I had to argue with my husband, my wife, like it, it takes, you know, you get this ebb and flow and like you feel as a doctor, like you have to be Tony Robbins and then, you know, a systems analyst. And it's like, that's why we hold our doctors as heroes, Pam, because um, you have to be a great clinician. Then you have to be a great entrepreneur and then you have to be a great, you know, marketer. And, and it's just to be a great practitioner, it takes a lot. So the more we can automate things and the more we the more we can bring consistency to things pam that's when doctors can go forever you know they don't run out of gas their body doesn't break down their wife doesn't want to divorce them their kids know who they are all those things um get fixed with a business model so it's important you got to have a team if you don't have a team we can help you know watch our videos get on my calendar recruiting hiring and onboarding is it's just a system today. And if you know how to, how to run the system, you'll get the right people on your team, even if you haven't for the last two years. Then once you get them, just outsource the training. It's low cost and it's somebody has it already figured out. You don't have the ability of your time. Don't do it. Now let's get into 
the nuts and bolts of the infrastructure that keeps it alive. One of the old, old systems in dentistry, and here's, I, I like getting to root cause problems and flipping the script. So root cause and flipping scripts are my, like what I like to do, because that's how you get people to buy in. So if I said to a team, man, you should really, um, train and you know, they're going to be avoiding that, like the plague, they're not going to want to do it, you know, or you're going to want, you know, I, I need you to look at your numbers. They're going to go, I'm not a numbers person. You know, just don't like numbers. So how we fix the problem is we put skin in the game and we create what we call the triple win bonus system. This is where the patient wins because they get all the care they need. This is where the team members win personally, professionally, and financially. And this is where the business owner wins because he or she doesn't have to micromanage anymore. They can run the practice from their smartphone and analytics that are proactive that allow them to take off vacations and not worry about their business crashing. That's the level of control and certainty that what I'm about to share with you puts in place. I just want to stop there. Is there anything that you want to unpack or talk about there? I, I talked about a lot there. There's a lot to unpack. I guess I, I want to see what's next because I want to see how you lay this out because I'm thinking how, where, when. I want to okay. See. So I All right, cool. To see. All right, cool. So we have to first reverse engineer the lifestyle that you want to live. Consider, Pam, that our doctors have been defaulting into the vacation days and the money based upon how everything unfolds. And it's all, it's all you're at effect rather than at cause in the matter. So I want to stop there. What did you hear me say? I want to have you give me back because I'm going deep here. So I want to make sure our listeners are understanding. It sounds to me like we need to sit down for a minute, consider what we want as an end game and see what kind of lifestyle we want to have. And then once we kind of figure out what we want, now we have to figure out what it's going to take to get there. Yeah, very good. Very good. Perfect. So, and, and please um, uh, be patient with me. I want to, I, I'm so dedicated to making sure that our listeners get everything and understand it. That's why I'm just, you know, doing a test on you today, you know, and we see the questions coming in and keep those coming in. I think that's really valuable if you have specific questions. So let's get right to work here. I'm going to, I'm going to actually go to, we've added the teleprompter, the Madden teleprompter, we call it. Um, and so we're going to get in here and I'm going to draw this out. So um, let's, let's do this together. Okay. So Pam, um, how much uh, do you uh, like how much let, let's just pick a, a you know and a case study let's just say that the doctor wants to create a million dollars does that sound fair let's just do a million as our number today okay so a million bucks and i'm going to say that it's fee for service just for rounded numbers but if it's a if it's a uh, ppo practice you would add your write off amount let's just say you're writing off 25% you will need to produce one, 1 1.25 if you're writing off 25%. So you have to add it, but I, just for a simple rounded numbers, we're gonna do a million, okay? Now, this is also where you uncollapse time and money. So this is where doctors like go, I can actually say how many vacation weeks we have. And yes, you can. You know, most of our doctors are, are millennials, young families, they have kids from like five to 11. And they're going, I take, I just talked to a doc from, from your community. And he's like, I take one week off a year. I'm like with four kids, <laughs> like one week a year, not on my watch. So at least four weeks a year. So I'm going to say, uh, 48 weeks. All right. Fair enough. And he was working four days and every other Saturday, I'm like, you're cutting your Saturdays off and you're going to work four days. So that's 192 days, 192. So now I have 192 days. Does that is so do you see how we just like designed his life and he's now taking four weeks off? Right? 192 days. He has two hygienists. So the ratio of doctor to hygienist is always minimally one to two. So one to two is our minimum uh, ratio. So if I take 192 times two, so it's it's 384. So I have 384 hygiene days. Clear so far? So this is doctor days and 192 or 384 hygiene days. Got me? Got you. So if I have 384 hygiene days, I'm going to take 384 and we start with hygiene. Um, minimally, I'd like to see 1,200. I'm going to be conservative here. 
and ideally about 1500 a day for a GP practice. All right. With decent PPOs, we add things like Perio protect and added value things that are, you know, aligned with the philosophy of the dentist. Let's just say 384 times uh, 120 or 1200. So 384 times uh, 100, uh, 1200 a day is 460. So 460, 800 is our hygiene revenue. Follow me so far? So we always pull that out first. Now, if we take out, we're going to minus uh, the 1 million. We need to do 539,200 and in, in the doctor. And we divide by 192. That's $2,800 a day in the doctor's schedule, which is absolutely ridiculous. That is a low number, right? So do you follow me so far? So far, the doctor's daily primary outcome is 2,800 and the hygienist is 1,200. Do you follow me so far? Yes. Right? Now, one thing that doctors miss is they need, if, they're, if they have a good case acceptance system in place, they need to do, um, they need to present more than they need to do for that day. So if you're, you have to present, let's just say you have, I'm going to round it off to 50%. If it's about 50% case acceptance, you need to do 5,000 presented per day and to get 2,800 accepted. This is presented. This is accepted. You follow that so far, right? Most people don't track this. And the, and the reason why this is a problem is because if you don't present enough per day and get enough accepted per day, your month after is not going to have enough dentistry in it in order for you to do that for that for the for the next month. So this is how you get peace of mind. So now what we do is we set up the front office. We have the appointment coordinator. They fill the schedule to 2800 each day for the doctor and 1200 for the hygienist. When they fill that schedule per day and again I'm going to give you a bonus system here, very generic. $10 per day per column. They can make up to $20 per day. Additionally, if they work 16 days times 20, you're going to give them $320. Now, you only pay that at the end of the month when collections is at least 85, which is what you need up here. Is this clear? Yes. Cool. So, now you have your team focused on the daily primary outcomes and letting them know that you have to collect at least your number to pay the bonus out. Now they're looking at production and collection simultaneously, and the entire team is looking at it. Okay. Now that's the appointment coordinator, the assistant. Their job is to hit $2,800 a day in the doctor's schedule. Now, when they go to the morning huddle, they're looking at making sure that the doctor's schedule is filled. Now, they're going to be behaviors are going to be different because they're not just going to be doing sterilization and turning rooms. They're going, hey, I need to get my number. They get $20 per day when the doctor hits their number. They're looking for incomplete treatment, having the patient stay extra, using the intro all camera, educating the patient on safe day dentistry. So it changes the behavior of the assistant to be outcome based, not being busy. That's the flip of the switch, not being activity based, but being outcome based. So that's the assistant with $20. The hygienist, they do $1,200 a day and they present if there's two and we have to get 5,000. They have to present at least 2,500 a day, which is very doable for a hygienist that has eight patients throughout the day. Very, very simple, especially if you're getting a, you know about 1,000 for a crown. So they get 10% above their 1,200. And the reason why we do this is because uh, there's a lot of practices that are underdiagnosing soft tissue. The average practice diagnoses 8% and gets 4% perio to profi ratio. We want to see that not at 8%, but 35%, because 50% of adults have some form of perio. So that makes sense, right? But, but most hygienists are not, they either, they, there's always a reason. They don't have a soft tissue program. They uh, don't have that philosophy. Whatever reason is, I don't have time. But when you can fix this in your hygiene department, that 1,200 goes to 1,500, 1,800, 2,000 a day because they're not just doing bloody profies all day. It changes the philosophy of hygiene. Um, and then 
they get 1% of the treatment that comes out of their room. And so um, now you have them focused on presenting care and, and helping you educate the patient, the doctor, so that when you walk in the room, everything's already set up on the intro all cameras, the pictures are set up, the education set up. As a doctor, you're the only one that can diagnose, but they set up the education and began the education, right? And then lastly is your treatment coordinator. And the treatment coordinator gets 1% on the treatment that gets accepted, right? Now, at this point, most people go, well, that's a lot to track, very simple. The appointment coordinator and the treatment coordinator have the tracking, um, and we also do it on an automated fashion, so they don't have to really you know, manage it, but, but it's very simple. Two people tracking these numbers, and then the bonus gets paid out as long as the 85 is hit. This is how you have a business model, having people motivated with skin in the game and driving the measures that you need at the end of the month. There was a lot there. I want to slow down here and answer any questions that have come in or any questions that you might have. I want to go back to the hygienist. You said 10%. Mm -hmm. So say they produce 1500 So there's $300 more than their goal. So they will get $30 that day, 10% of the $300, correct? That's correct. Beautifully done. Smart mathematician in addition to clinician. Very nice. But yeah, no, it's brilliant. But see, now we have them have skin in the game to actually do better care, more care. You know, a lot of times they're just focused on getting through the day, getting the profi done. But we want our hygienists to be patient educators, advocate. You know, there's four levels of, of practice, practice philosophies. The lowest level is emergency. The next level is maintenance. The higher level is optimal. And then the top level is complete health dentistry, where you're educating from a whole body perspective. So you want to look at your four philosophies and see where you fit. And then when you elevate it, when you elevate the value proposition, all of a sudden the team mobilizes and starts raising to that level as well. I like that. So if you produced 84,000 instead of 85,000, Nobody gets anything. And here's what happens. I can't tell you when a month ends on a Saturday, I've had team members go in and get the mail to get to 85,000 so everybody could bonus. See, this is where you flip the script and you have, see what's missing in dentistry. And the reason why we can't get our team on board is because first of all, a lot of docs, docs are afraid to share the numbers here on all this. But the other thing is, the docs playing for this number of 85 collections, the team doesn't even know that, what they have to collect to pay their bills and get a bonus and all that. Nobody's ever figured that out. So that's why I built this proprietary system that has everybody win. But once, once, you, um, once you educate the team and you give them the game to play, they play the game and they change the way they look at where they go and they wanna help you as a practice owner be successful and they know if it's 85,000 and you set that benchmark, they go after it. So I'm going to play devil's advocate. Because Thank you. Right, right now we are spending a lot on our staff per hour. Yep. So what about the doctors that say, Hey, you know what? I'm already paying them more than I would three years ago. How do I justify this additional money that's going to be given out? That BBM, that 85,000 number, we just raise it so that they're paying for the gap of the salary that you're having to pay. So let's just say you went up your 6% more than you need to be. We go up and make up that number so the trigger, Pam, doesn't happen until the overhead is more than paid for, including the bonuses that you're going to pay out. The way I have this set up is you're sharing the percentage. So I want to, I want to highlight this. This is very important. I want to highlight this. I'm going back to Telestrator time. One second. Um, so there's two levels of profitability. Do you see my screen yet? Okay, here we go. So there's two levels of profitability, right? There's, this is your, this is your, um, break point. And this has been like where you've been stuck right here. And the, let's just say your practice is 30% profit down here. Inside here, there's fixed costs and there's variable costs. Okay. Once the fixed costs are taken care of, the profit on the rung above this number is 70%. 
because you're only dealing with lab supplies, your bonus, third party financing, because third party financing helps you close bigger cases. And so when you add all those up, it ends up being 30% of a variable expense. When you, when you're only adding 30%, the profitability up here, if you're getting more to your team, you know, so often a practice is underperforming by, by half or a third, because they're not looking at, um, re patient retention and case acceptance. We'll take care of that at a future session on how to build your top line. But this is how you deal with the expenses by keeping your fixed costs flat and getting more out of turning your payroll into a profit center. Gary, that was awesome. And I see a ton of questions coming in and we will get to them um, whether now or after. I know we've been uh, a little content heavy today as opposed to answering all the questions. Um, but there's a lot of questions coming in about how can you help me? I need help in my practice. And so I know you're busy, but you are offering your time free of charge to meet with our dental economics doctors personally. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, and thanks, Pam. Yeah, I, I block 10 hours out of my schedule and they're, they're half hour increments. And you know, you can link in here to my Calendly and get right on my calendar. And the reason why I do it is because, you know, there's so much information out there and it's like, how, how do I sift through all this? And I, I have my own story, you know, uh, doctors share their story with me when they get on the call. That's the first thing, like, they tell me their journey and they tell me what they want to create, or if they don't know what to create, then we we get to that. But it's really been profound to get to know people all around the, across the U.S. and North America. And then from there, we really sit down and say, like, th what they're wanting is they want certainty. What they're wanting is control back because they've lost control through the pandemic. What they're wanting is a step-by-step -step plan to get there. And we actually have those conversations and they leave with, like, their shoulders down hope for a better future. And then they, they really, you know, it's interesting. They pick up on some of the things that you really highlight or the questions you asked and they say, Hey, can you tell me a little, uh, just for instance, uh, the, the gentleman who I spoke to before, he's from DC. And he said, you know, you were saying I had to present, you know, 5,000 a day. And I, I don't know how to do that. How do I track that? And like, I don't want to seem like a salesperson. And we actually had that dialogue and worked through it. And he was like, wow, literally. And he was like, I can now go back and like, you know, know what to do and how to do it. So that's what I like to do on those calls. Uh, but it's really free reign. Um, it's just joy for me to do. And it's something I, I it's my way to give back to the uh, profession. So I'm, I'm grateful to do it. Thank you so much. And thank you on behalf of Dental Economics that you're taking care of all my people. So thank you. I think this is going to be amazing. So mm -hmm. I really have time for one more question. And I know we have to wrap up. Um, when you were talking about the, the triple win bonus system, yeah, um, having the whole team on board and knowing that there's different numbers, if you will, of a bonus yeah. that they can get, um, does that fragment the team or, you know, how does that work? The number one question I got, so I'm glad it came up here. It actually brings them together on a whole new level. Logically, you're looking at that and you're going, let's just bonus them at the end of the month on collections. That doesn't work. And here's why it doesn't work, Pam, because it becomes a part of their salary. And if they don't get it, they're like angry and it demotivates them. Uh, the other thing is it it does the 80-20 rule. 20% of your team members are producing 80% of your, your results. In this model, it's 100% of your team members producing 100% of your results. And then here's the other thing. There's three types of team members. There's the dependent, there's the, the independent, dependent, independent, and what we want to create is the interdependent. In this system, the way it's designed is you're only as good as the person before you and the person that you hand off to. So if you don't get the appointment scheduled, the hygienist can't you know, do his or her job. And if they can't educate, the treatment coordinator can't do his or her job. And then you can't fill the schedule and then the assistant can't do their job. It creates an interdependency and it strengthens the team. And here's the other thing. It allows the doctor to get out of the center of their business so that the team takes over and they're self-managing themselves and the people before them and after them because now everybody has skin in the game. The better that that appointment coordinator does, the better the hygienist does, the better the hygienist does, the better. So it, it raises the bar and what it does what I call healthy tension.
You see, yes, there's going to be some tension here because people have to operate differently and they have to be accountable to more people. That's what you want as a business owner. If you don't have that, then you're going to have to be the micromanager in the center of the game. Very good question, but it actually does the opposite and it fixes the problem of having the team be accountable and, and support their brothers and sisters next to them. Great question. So interesting. And I think that uh, there's obviously so many more questions coming in. And unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Um, if you, we didn't get to your question, don't you worry. We'll make sure that Gary gets, um, is able to answer them and get back to you on that. Yep. And um, again, Gary, this was such a pleasure. This time flies by every time I'm with you. And I can't wait for next month. Yeah. Thank you, Pam. And thank you to all the listeners for all your shout outs and support each, each month. Thank you very much. All right, everybody, we will see you next month um, for DE Solutions Lab. I'm Dr. Pam Maragliano Muniz and Gary, Katie, this was the best time tonight. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Bye, everyone.